What is up, team? The CrossFit Games season for 2024 has officially kicked off. Um, we didn't really know what to expect this year. But I think we got a lot of uh, preemptive suggestions of what the year would be like or what the Open would be like or how inclusive it would be or how challenging it would or wouldn't be. And um, we're, we're kicking it off with getting a great flavor of what will likely be on the docket even for the next two weeks. We've got one dumbbell and we've got your body in space. 24.1 is dumbbell snatches and lateral burpees over the dumbbell. Uh, what I like most is that it's a bit of a unique rep scheme in regards to the fact that we are going to be specifically demanded to keep the dumbbell in one hand until we reach the desired rep, rep scheme. Then we're down on the ground for lateral burpees. Then we're back to the opposite arm finish the round of rep schemes for that particular arm, and then we're back on the ground for more burpees. Um, I think this adds a little bit of nuance to it. I think we train dumbbell snatches a lot in regards to alternating fashion because that's what we're mostly exposed to, but I like that this is a bit of an ode to a single arm kettlebell swing. It's consecutive repetitions on one side. We get more of a twist through our upper body in regards to the unilateral stimulus and the muscles that we're going to be working. So it will feel different. It will tax you differently. And for all those things, I'm, I'm pumped about it. I like it. I think it's a beautiful thing when we can get put out of our comfort zone in a very small way that expands the margins of our experience because that's the point of our methodology. Um, to me, when you think about this, uh, there's this example of kind of like unknown and unknowable, but it's simple. And again, it's it's achievable for everyone. All they've got to do is scale the load, even if it's down to no weight in that one hand and they go down and touch the ground and stand up and lift their arm on the one side. So very inclusive, uh, but equally, as we saw, if you guys watched the open announcement, very devastating for those with high level fitness. I know that Jeff Adler finished that workout in just over six minutes and um, everyone else, I think in the heat, heat came in in just under seven. Um, the big thing that I would point out is that, of course, Adler's cycle rate with the dumbbell was pretty fast. We know that he's significantly shorter and has to has it to be he's forced to travel the load a, a lesser distance than uh, Brent Fikowski. Now, when it comes to um, pacing overall, though, most of the leeway or the ground was separated or ground was made up um, on his burpees. Uh, Jeff had a very unique ability to stay rigid through his burpee. There wasn't a lot of warming up out of the bottom. Of course, he hopped up all the reps, no lunging or stepping up. And uh, what you'll want to pay more specifically uh, close attention to is the ability that he had to redirect himself off the ground. Um, clearly, horizontal pressing is something that, that he enjoys or at least is really good at when it comes in the form of a burpee. It's like an explosive or a plyometric push-up. And he did that very well. It saved him time. And of course, that accumulates throughout all the reps that are prescribed. So um, nonetheless, my overall thought process is this, folks. I know you've been waiting for my tips and suggestions. Don't forget that below this video, we will have uh, access for you uh, to click a link and be able to um, read through the overall summary and description and where you can kind of find time and our suggestions and strategies on that in written form. So if you don't want to take it from here, uh, feel free to click the link and or uh, above or below this video or somewhere wherever you're watching it. Nonetheless, um, my take here is that it's, it's a hinge centric workout. So if you struggle with bending through the waist, um, this is going to be something that really starts to blow you up over time. Now, of course, if you're a semifinals athlete or someone that even is going to punch their ticket easily at quarterfinals, this repetition, these repetitions under this particular load aren't going to create a, a ton of undue stress for you, but just be mindful of that. You're going to blow up your low back here. Um, if you're a proficient hinger and you're looking forward to this, then if you can make haste on these burpees, this could be a great workout for you and a great way to kick, kick down the door in the 2024 season. All those things considered preparation is important. I want to suggest that you guys spend about 10 minutes doing some uh, manual, whether it's foam rolling work, whether it's banded stretching or distracted stretching work, or whether it's just static stretching, but open up the tissues that are tight from your week of training or that you know are going to experience a lot of stress during this workout. Hamstrings, glutes, low back, posterior shoulder capsule, uh, shoulder blades, uh, front of your deltoid and your triceps and your pec. All of those muscles probably need some type of attention in regards to foam rolling, lacrosse ball rolling, stretching, and opening up. 
So I suggest you spend about 10 minutes doing that. Then you want to get dynamic. And again, through the link that you can find, we've got a complete example of a dynamic warm up. But from a general perspective, you want to think about doing something like supersetting a minute of rowing where you're hinging and kind of almost mimicking the movements that are going to take place in this workout. So sending positive blood flow to the muscles that will be taxed and used. And then something like a, um, a hip down push up. Uh, along with some type of hinge movement, maybe in, in our form, I think in our warm up, it's going to be ground to overhead with no weight. So you're going to do a minute in a row, easy pace. Then you're going to do um, several hip down push ups to prepare yourself for the different body positions that you're going to pass through in the burpee. And then, of course, you're going to do the ground to overhead because you're mimicking the snatch and the way you're going to stand up each burpee rep. So go through those. Um, then after that, you want to get more specific. So you want to, of course, warm up your upper body, do some push-ups, do some Spider-Mans in case you're going to step up any of the burpees, do some no push-up burpees at some point in your warm up in order to get your heart rate up. And of course, help prepare you for the patterns that you're going to repeat time after time after time in this couplet. Um, and then of course you want to build yourself to a primer, which again, we have as an example, click the link. Um, where you're going to actually use the weight that you're going to do the full workout with, and you're going to do some burpees. You're going to break it down into shorter sets and reps so that you can actually get a feel for the stimulus. And we want you to attack this primer hard. You want to go through two, three rounds of something like five snatches, right arm, three burpees, five snatches, other arm, three burpees. And I would say anywhere between two to three rounds. Hit it pretty hard. Let your heart rate get up really, really high and feel a lot of breath. Take a few minutes to recoup. Stand by until it's time for your heat and then go get this thing at your game day pace. Now, in regards to execution, I mentioned this already in the introduction that, you know, a lot of the focus is going to be on how you execute the burpee. So be mindful of considering how you want to do reps while you're fresh, how you can also do reps when you're tired. It's always good to have something in your back pocket. I know many of you watching this might not need that. But many of you day-to-day -day athletes are going to take that into consideration. Hey, I can start by hopping my feet up. Maybe that's the best thing to do. Like AC said, you can manage time a lot on the burpees. Again, a lot of the time in this workout is going to be spent specifically on the burpee. So even if it's just through the first 21 or through the first all 42 of the burpees, you can hop up and it allows you to stay steady on the dumbbell. It is well worth it because then the latter part of the workout, you can start stepping up, but you didn't lose that time early when you didn't have to. For you heavy hitters, Folks watching this or listening to this with a lot of capacity, you probably need to stick to hopping your feet up every repetition. And not only that, but you need to start with more of a rigid body position. Try to tax your upper body. Try to be plyometric a lot like Jeff Adler was in regards to the explosivity off the ground. It's a great way to strengthen your upper body specifically and not just use this burpee as a placeholder, which we can often do in workouts where we're just methodically working through this. So this can be a great training stimulus for some of you eyeing quarterfinals into the future because we might need to be able to do a movement like this with much more urgency and much more speed. And that can come through upper body strength, plyometrics, and of course, uh, capacity development. Um, transition's got to be tight. When you finish the, the last burpee and you clear that dumbbell, it's got to be an intentional step over the dumbbell, hand on the dumbbell, and we're working. It doesn't matter how many dump, how many reps await you. doesn't matter if you plan to break it up. doesn't matter if you plan to go unbroken. That is a trap right there, that transition from the, the last burpee, stepping back over the dumbbell, and getting that thing swinging and rocking over your head. Uh, again, understand, you can make up minuscule time on the dumbbell snatches. So let's say, for example, you're like, I really am good at dumbbell snatching, Adrian. Well, I'm, I'm going to tell you that it's great to be good at it, but if you speed up and you utilize 20% more effort in order to gain two seconds on me on the dumbbell snatches, does that 20% effort reflect the two second reward? And if it doesn't, if it doesn't reflect that um, or if you think it does, if you, let's, let's pretend if you think it does reflect that and you choose then to do it, you're going faster, you're like pulling it down to the ground and you're kind of really in all sprint mode. Now, here's also the caveat that some people are fit enough to do this. But for the vast majority of the world, you're trying to pull the dumbbell down, slam it to the ground and get that thing back up. You're rocking because you like dumbbell snatches. Well, don't forget all those burpees are looming. And if you go slower on the burpees because you'll spend more time doing that amount of work, it is going to penalize you. So the dumbbell snatch can be a trap in itself. As written in the in the description, um, choose rest before rest chooses you, folks. It's important for you to understand that while this is going to be a great test, and yes, full send is the way, um, look, if the dumbbell's heavy for you, if the dumbbell's going to create a problem, if you know your back's going to blow up, choose rest first. Don't be forced to rest. 
If you choose rest, your rest will be shorter. You'll get back to it. You'll be steady moving on the burpees. If you don't choose rest and rest chooses you, it's going to be all bad. You're going to be hands on the knees, resting all day, waiting to pick it up. Then the burpees are going to get sloppy. And then guess what? You're going to be risking going 10 minutes or more when you planned on being eight minutes or below. Or even worse, excuse me, you're going to get time capped. We don't want that smoke here in week one. I want you to start this year of the competitive season, or I'm sorry, this week of the competitive season in 2024 off with some great momentum. So plan accordingly. And um, when you guys are done and done, done and dusted, understand your low back's going to feel a little tight. Glutes are going to feel locked up. Shoulders are going to be smoked. Show your body some love and respect by making sure you cool down appropriately. 10 minutes on a bike, some static stretching to the hamstring, sit and reach, pancake stretch. And then of course, uh, use the final time before you leave the gym. A lot like we started with some static stretching, some foam rolling and attention to the muscle groups that got smoked. This will help you move through the rest of your weekend with some positive training. And if you're one of those sickos out there that plan on repeating, this will help you recover so you can give it yet another run down here uh, to start the year. But I really love this workout. I think they did a great job putting on the show. I appreciate the golden barbell and the rewards that they um, have created not just for the elites, but also for the community. And I'm really excited to see how it continues to play out. The only caveat is that nonsense is the athletes pulled right there with workout two. We're going to tie this workout and then see what happens on the final workout. I don't, I don't like it folks. I don't, I don't like it. Let's tie. I don't, I don't like it. Now, there's a lot of things that we could discuss, and hey, you know, some of you are going to be like, hey, Adrian, it's there, there are three workouts. Listen, they're, they're competing to be the fittest people on earth. Um, it was five minutes of squat clean thrusters or squat clean plus jerk, whatever you wanted to do. I'd just be interested to see and hear about who whose idea was it? Why did they want to do it? Why not just be smoked for the open workout? Were you afraid of what it, were you afraid of what it was going to be? Were they worried they were going to hurt themselves? I mean, look, it wasn't me out there, but I'm just telling you that the alliance there with all four of them tying, it was very non-CrossFit-y. So there's that, and those are my thoughts. Good luck to you. Good luck to yours. If you're crushing this with your affiliate, hey, root on other people. Push them to get their very best out of themselves because I think through these experiences that we do right here, um, you can learn a lot about yourself and you can help show someone that they're there's more to them than maybe they even thought. I think I've seen a lot of people make huge life transformations from doing stuff just like this in the open where they're uncomfortable and they're still willing to do it um, regardless of what maybe they're worried people might think or regardless of um, even the lack of value that they might think it has. They're like, ah, this isn't a big deal. I'm not trying to win. That's okay. Lean in. Give it all you got. See what happens. Um, the adaptation on the other side is typically well worth the effort and the commitment. But... You guys know how we do. We'll do our very best here. To all the athletes in the true camp, good luck. Kill it. And um, you know what's coming next. Keep rising.